I was there ne- nearly uh, one and a half years, nearly, I, I think. Then uh, we move, I move uh, Vipa in Queensland. I was uh, totally locked up immigration camp six years, more than six years. Today on Dirty Linen, we are chatting to Nero Vichasaka. He is a Sri Lankan Tamil man who is in Australia running a business, uh, cooking and selling kotu roti. I have been lucky enough to eat Nero's kotu roti at a beautiful event to celebrate the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre's Feast for Freedom, in which uh, anybody who wants to gets the recipes of uh, selected refugees and cooks them to create awareness and to fundraise for refugees and people seeking asylum in Australia. Nero, welcome to Dirty Linen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Ah, oh, thank you for being here. So Kotu Roti is such a specific Sri Lankan street food dish that you don't only eat, but you hear as well, don't you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Tell us tell us about it. Tell us what it is and, and why you might listen to it as well as eat it. So most of um, uh, food makers or their small um, shop they have a, around Sri Lanka, the evening time, they make kotoroti. So we wait sometime uh, our home also hear that sound to go to eat that uh, dish. And especially it's a straight, very straight food and especially they make a evening time. Um, yeah, it's a mix uh, veggie, curry and um, roti parat. Uh, we cook in a hot plate. Yeah, that's a, this have a very uh, different, a uh, few different uh, version also, vegetarian um, and meat also, yeah. And so um, what, I, what I love about it is that the sound comes from the vendors chopping the kotoroti. So you've got these two, I guess, scrapers and stirrers, one in each hand, and they've, they've sort of got a flat blade and you percussively hit them up and down on the hot plate. And um, different kotoroti uh, vendors have different rhythms, don't they? Yeah, that's a, we can um, tell this is a proper kotoroti maker because they play the you know with they play with the metal so the hot plate also metal and the spoon uh hot chopping um thing also metal so they some uh, if they are proportional people or they are uh, very well so they uh, play the sound you know rhythm they have a rhythm good rhythm so some people go to uh, that uh, place to listen that rhythm sound also so you could tell you you could be listening and you would know which which kotoroti man you was uh what you could you could hear so you could go towards that sound to get your favorite kotoroti yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it so do you have a particular rhythm yourself or do you just like improvise um no just i i have that um that tra- uh, traditional rhythm i can say that because i learned that um now I, um on on uh, on the truck, uh, so I'm nearly uh, qualified, you know, <laughs> through the tra- uh, sound. Yeah, I love it. So your um, your food truck, it took a took a kotu roti man. You, we can see that popping up at markets and festivals around Melbourne. Um, t- yeah, tell us what it's like to to make this dish in front of people and to serve it at the various places you do. Um. So yeah, yeah, I go to um, monthly three different places to make this dish. Um, uh, that some people come and say, "Oh yeah, I know this sound. I knew, I knew this sound." They're saying so. That's I ask next question. Are uh, you have you been to Sri Lanka? Yes. So, so that's uh, some people follow the sound too here. Yeah, most of uh, uh, some uh, most of people are have uh, been Sri Lanka, so they know the sound. So they they had that dish. They come to ah, and they have with uh, the dish, and also um, some people uh, saw the action and you know the ingredients, everything. So ah, the smell, you know that fresh smell. So they come to say they. Some people don't know the name, but they they point out that dish. Ah, I I need that one. Can I have that? One? So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, good action shot, and people like that. Mm, that's, that's great. Too, yeah. 
Yeah, I love it as a dish because, you know, to have, so you have the roti, the, the, the bread, and then it's chopped up and then fried again. And I just think I'm such a lover of, of any bread really, but roti is, is so special. And to have it cooked again in a dish, to me, uh, it's just, it's the ultimate. And then of course, you can be with all kinds of different meats or it can be vegetarian, can be with egg. Um, so it's a very versatile dish as well, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, you know, here we can have, I have a, few options also we can uh, make it up <laughs> mm. um okay great so Nira, i'd love to learn a bit more about your background um because uh yeah in in sri lanka you were not um you were not a cook or you not a, you didn't have a food business can you tell us about your life in sri lanka and why you had to leave um so that I grew up uh, in Sri Lanka, a very small village. And until I leave, can I left country? It's had a civil war. So I grow up. Um, the civil war situation, um, a country place. So, so that's make us a little bit um, danger or not freedom life. So that's how how to leave a country. Um, yeah. That, and did you, did you leave by yourself or with anybody else? Um, I left some uh, with some friends. Yeah, a few friends we left. And how old were you when you left? Um, nearly thirty something. Thirty. Okay. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people would know about the civil war in Sri Lanka between the the Sinhalese dominated government. Um, and minority Tamils. So you're you're from a, the Tamil um, part of the Sri Lankan society, and and um, I mean, in and out of civil war and various peace periods of, of so-called peace, there've been lots of flare-ups. But Tamils have, um, yeah, had a really difficult time in Sri Lanka for uh, yeah for for a long time, right? Yeah, that's true. Nearly um, um, thirty-four. 36 years something so that's a very long war for the as a uh, recognized as a sri lankan so we uh, as a, a tamil people are we we not get much uh, freedom or rights as a sri lankan so that's continue and generation by generation it's it's happened it's still up uh, it's a different way that it's happening now we, you can uh, people can follow or they can read through them um, internet, they can find out more. Mm, sure. So when you left, I mean, how did you leave and where did you go? Um, that's a kind of um, um, English movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, I had uh, some um, uh, some threat or some uh, dangerous situation so I have to uh, we have to move so then we move from my village to other village so we stay in uh, some um, very remote area or near the forest so we stay there and a little bit we hide ourselves wow so then uh, we organize um, um, escape from the country we found some people uh, we give the money or, you know, that's something we, uh, they can do. So if we have money, you can do anything. So that's how we use that um, um, way. So we left country. Then I was, I reached in Malaysia. Then I uh, play for the Mal- Malaysian uh, UNHCR. So then um, I don't have any, uh, when I was in Malaysia, I don't have any uh, visa. So I can live um, uh, under Malaysian UNHCR. So, so that's I lived there in Malaysia a few months. So then, um, Malaysia also I had uh, some. Uh, you know, we can't work. Or we we don't have much as a uh, freedom man. So, we can live uh, legally, but we can't do any um, work or study or or lot of things we can do. So. Then uh, we apply, so and the Mala- Malaysian unit just said uh, you have to wait to resettle other countries. It's, it's, they not give any time frame. It's take uh, five years or ten years or any years. So this in a U- United Nations um, refugee camp is that where you were at that time? Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so they were like, well, you've got to go somewhere else. We don't know where, we don't know when, and you can't do anything else in the meantime. So you just, just, you just have to stay here and wait. Yes. They, they keep us alive. They give us food and some, um, voucher to shop other things. Um, that's only they keep us same like alive. And so then, um, that time a lot of boat come to Australia. So yeah, we, my friends got a chance. So we got a agent to, we found the agent and we, um, reach, we asked them to, uh, organize to go to Australia by boat. So then, yeah, one day, 2009, we get on the boat. boat. <laughs> okay. And what was that boat ride like? Um, they said uh, before we get on the boat, um, they said uh, you have uh, everything in the boat. Um, they said ship. So they, that's, uh, not, they never use any boat words. Just they said ship. You're going to get on the ship. That ship have everything, so no problem. Um, food and safety things, water, and other things, everything, medicine, everything. Um, so one night they took us very small, um, same like kayak, uh, ten people or five people, uh, same like. So then they, uh, we get on big uh, fishing boat, same like uh, that's a, a wooden boat, not very strong ship. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, we thought, okay, so this is the next, next one. So we're going to uh, get another big ship. Um, so that's, that board uh, looked like uh, old, looked like new. That's a very um, medium uh, quality thing. And so, we are, yeah, we thought, okay, we're going to ranch for another one also. So then we wait in uh, oceans, then every night some people come, five people, ten people, same like. They load, they load until um, nearly 50 people, more than 50 people load that boat. Um, wow. They, yeah, it's, we stay in a few days. So we stay in a few days. So the few days, within a few days, we uh, we got the seasick. So so we everyone want to sit on the hull, you know, the front of the boat. So... Nothing there, just a boot, big piece of boot only, you know, that coming boots only, the joint, and between we sit in the joint only. Uh, we sit on the floor, nothing, no chairs or, or not seat or not, no cloth, nothing. So we, we, what we bring the cloth, we use that to sit on or we make sometimes it's water come inside. So we use that cloth to try ourselves or keep warm ourselves and yeah sometimes we warm it next to us or next to our on the feet so we wipe it <laughs> yeah we, we that's a very um dangerous journey yeah oh it sounds horrific and so at a certain point you realized oh okay we're not going to a bigger boat this is the boat that is going to take us the whole yeah. way yeah we don't know we never come out of that hull uh, we don't know what's happening. Boat is moving or st- staying one place, or because that wave move all oh. the boat. So we are also seasick. We feel, ah, oh, what's happening? What's um? Sometimes they bring the big pot of fries, uh, the potato. Um, they, that's a food they are sending inside. So um, that potato and rice, boiled potato and rice, boiled potato and cooked rice. So um sometimes that's potato cook calf cook so we eat and you know we can't eat calf and sometimes we eat uh after eat it's straight coming out that's a, we everybody most of people got seasick so um, i know uh. he, when i was sri lanka too <laughs> so it's make very a uh, sick sick journey or uh, and do you know how long it was before you got to land? Yeah, uh, I got a two, two weeks. Two weeks uh, I was on the board, that same board. And the whole time you were just in the hull, you couldn't see if or where you were going. There was no, um, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming, like, what was the toilet situation? Um, they, they allow sometime um, uh, up, we can go up to uh, toilet 
so that's a uh, they sometimes they allow to toilet um in uh, evening night time so we can come up night time so when we come at uh, night so we same like we are crawling you know we holding the uh, wood piece and wood somewhere so we have something so we walk same like with four four legs <laughs> uh, to the toilet and go there so we we don't have any toilet because we not eat much food <laughs> okay so we go there that's um we can see the toilet through the toilet sea water so that's make the universe too then we come back again same uh, and when when at the end of this two weeks what happened where did you end up um end up uh, australian navy stop uh, australian navy come and rescue after uh, we reached the um, christmas island some friends said our boat break uh, engine break uh, a few days so we stay there and some people have a uh, uh, contact the uh, some people and they organize so i don't know they ask help so then australian navy come and rescue us did the engine break or that's just what they said so that someone would come no that's a completely breakdown we don't know that's until uh, army come and uh, take their uh, big ship wow and at that point did you think okay this is good or did you think okay this this is bad i mean what did you think um you know that situation that time we don't know we have we don't have i don't have any energy we feel uh, what's happening or uh, we moving same like uh, dehydrated and every time throw and no water enough not food enough not food yeah so you, yeah you don't have the energy to really think much one way or the other you just sort of in survival mode yeah so then uh, next army come and uh, call us the navy come they rescue then they took us they are big ship then after that we start to uh, bring a little bit water and they they give they give a little bit food so yeah okay so they took you onto the big ship did they Yeah yes yeah yeah and then um where did you go next uh they took uh, they keep us two days because most people are very um energy you know no energy less they can't walk also so we keep they keep the in the ship wow and they near the christmas island they keep us and they the doctors giving um little bit energy and water slowly 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 they give the solid food also so they we start to eat then when we are ready to uh move small boat and uh go to the sea so so they start to move one, one by one okay and did they take you to christmas island yeah yes they dropped us to uh, christmas island and so on christmas island there's a detention center and a lot of refugees who arrived in australia by boat were taken there um tell me about that about that period um a few weeks we were separated uh, until we finish our medical check up and our you know our well, our identity or i don't know that's uh, we had a lot of medical check up and um, they ask our details um they give good food and everything then after that they send us big main camp so they that time they said nearly 4 4000 people are locked up that camp so we also joined with that 4000 wow and i mean i can only imagine what that was like but it sounds I mean when you see so many people that are in detention that aren't living in the Australian community was that really concerning for you that this this wasn't going to be um you weren't going to be I guess assessed as a refugee and accepted into the community in a timely way Yeah you know that's uh, people come from different area different country to live uh, as a live uh, freedom people freedom man or freedom um society because uh, they had a very bad uh, um situation their back countries everyone so you can uh, talk with them anyone come as a refugee they have a very bad life so uh, every in christmas asylum you can see nearly 4000 more than 4000 people walk around nearly uh, maybe 
that's a, you can see if you sit one place you can see the lot of people are in a small area um so the most of people have a uh, some hope some people not hope and behind everything you know some people lot of people left just themselves so they are family kids and everything neighbor, you know lot of things they behind them um, they are families. so that things are make them to stress life also make stress love life and also they don't know what going happen so every government dome that different mini, uh, immigration minister changing policy if they come they change straight they change uh, refugee policy only so that's directly affect this um the innocent people you know that uh, they come from dead place or war so they come they come to live as a freedom people then again um that new, new law come and smash their life and hope and everything yeah so h- how long were you there nero i was there ne- nearly uh, one and a half years nearly i, I think then uh, we move i move uh, we pay in queensland um i they are also ne- nearly years then i was uh, totally locked up immigration camp 6 years more than 6 years that is i mean that is a lot of your life to be locked up how many different detention centers were you in i i been uh, four different places and uh, christmas island then uh, we pay in queensland and port augusta in adelaide uh, finally broad meadows in melbourne uh it's just so distressing and i mean it's this is 6 years of your life and you know it's um yeah it's really distressing so so broad meadows um the detention center in in melbourne so what at what point and what was the reason that you were finally released into the community um really i don't know because um before they said before until release uh, from immigration camp uh, they said uh, you are uh, you got a negative uh, security clearance um i asked you know i asked why or what's the reason they say no under the some law they give uh, some paper under that this law you are um you got a negative clearance that's only uh, we got answer um then one day they uh, they said okay after 6 years they said okay you you are clear or you are you can leave this community okay and so what is your visa status now um now i got a, a temporary uh, visa and so is it like a a bridging visa i mean do you, what's the pathway is there a pathway to permanent residency or is that not is that still not clear um yeah it's still uh, not clear for me or some people because they have a two type of uh, temporary visa and i got a uh, that's a 5 years valid temporary visa it's called safe haven enterprise right so you've and how far into that 5 years are you um just i got a uh, nearly month ago okay okay so you know you've got 5 years where you're allowed to live and work in australia is that right um i don't know the uh, my legal uh, representative he said um i still we, we are, i not talk much with about that visa condition everything he sent the email i read it a cough i understand cough not understand so yeah i'm waiting to talk with him and also yeah some people some some friends got this visa but still uh, uh different that's also different uh, uh, um every month or every six month that visa upgrading or changing some policies uh, rules so i don't know still i just um yeah feel really stricken by the uncertainty that you've been living with for so long i i'm so glad that you're living in in our community and obviously contributing wonderful energy and food um to our community but it's um yeah it's just really shameful that you are kept in such limbo for so long uh obviously nobody 
um, you know, would would no one, no one would put themselves through what you've been through uh, for a whim. There's obviously a, you know a really good reason that you had to leave Sri Lanka. So yeah, I just feel really sorry that this is this is the situation that you're in. Um, Nero, one thing I have have always wondered is about the food in the detention centres. Can you tell me how you were fed? Um, that's a uh, uh, boiled vegetable, and they keep they bring boiled because that uh, you know a, a lot of country people are locked up one place. Mm, yeah, so they can't eat my uh, my traditional meal or rice and curry. They, I don't know what they are uh, with this traditional. So that that's a food provider. So that's a Seco company do that things. They just boil the vegetable uh, and bring the sauce, some sauce, and we just point uh, giving uh, this vegetable and that one piece of meat and okay. So they have uh, which sauce would you like? So this one, or that one. So we pointing that one. Uh, they put on top of that's uh, that's it. That sounds super boring and quite demoral demoralizing as well sometimes they uh, already put sauce so sometimes we bring that uh, meal we wash that sauce and we eat <laughs> yuck yeah um so i understand that you you started uh, making kotoroti in detention can you tell me about that um uh, so after uh, uh, i move uh, broad made of scam uh, we got a chance to make our own meal uh, once a year, own meal one one day a month. So that time, uh, some friends um, they are good cook. They they good cook. So we make a small uh, group and we we cook every evening for for the for us. So nearly a lot of uh, long term uh, refugees are locked up in immigration camp uh, in a. Broad Meadows and Sydney. So still some people locked up nearly 11 years. Um, and uh, so that team, uh, we make a meal. And uh, so one of person, our good cook, so we he's the team. Um, he's a main chef. So others are, we are kind of uh, helping to him. So yeah, that's a, a kind of um, very activities, good activities for us, uh, for change our a little bit. Or routine. Mm. And did you say it was just one day a month? No, one one day every day. One one meal. Oh, you could do it every day. Yeah. One meal every day. Yeah. That must have made a big difference to, I guess, your state of mind while you were in detention. Yeah. So we we was after uh, locked up. You know, we was locked up six years and some are uh, still there. But after three years, we got uh, this chance. Three or four years, uh, we requested come uh, me immigration we won't eat some our uh, traditional meal so make us to do that so then organize for that wow well i mean i'm really glad that at least that was something that you could do while you're in this awful situation did the idea for your business start from there um not really so after i release immigration cam um I got a chance to work uh, that um, one to project. One is a Tamil feast called Tamil feast. Uh, we make uh, they are also traditional rice and curry, and uh, other one now free to feed. It, they also um, um, I I just make a, they are rice and curry. So you know that's a uh, um, we we learn through the some we that's a few friends make uh, we had the we started that this. Uh, project so so that's make uh, make me a little bit uh, learn more a lot of uh, skill i develop and a uh, lot of confidence so it's come and i i got idea to australian people uh, melbourne people like to rice and curry and they like to eat different food and things so i thought okay i want to stay in this field so yeah that's uh, make me uh, start my own food business too <laughs> Uh, that's that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I think people here definitely love to, you know, sometimes it's really important to reflect on the journeys that these people that are cooking the food have, have taken to, to get to get here. Um, 
yeah, everybody has a story and some stories such as your own are very circuitous and, and tough. Um, Nero, what would you like to say to um, anyone listening and anyone in the Australian community or indeed around the world about, you know, the situation that, that you're in? Um, that's uh, talk with the refugees and some news are we, we it's make us very pain because um, it's unbelievable news come sometime because uh, they that news I don't know where they are getting, but we are still alive, living in this community. So anyone before the put on news, so they can find out one refugee talk face to face. So anyway, so um, after that they can. Um, put a news because they want to put a new uh, real life or real situation about re- refugee and in this Australia also a lot of refugee, a lot of people are uh, having very hard time a uh, lot of situation they are, they, they are visa condition and um, language barrier and still some people 11 years finish some people locked up, one person one of my friends is still locked up in immigration camp so find out that uh, kind of um, people and help them and yeah, support for us. So, mm. um, yeah, it's really is incredible to think about th- how different some people some people's lives are in our community. We feel like, you know, Australia is a rich country and we should be able to look after everybody that's that's in it. And obviously we really don't do that. For me, I just think every day about um, about the um, Sri Lankan family that's locked up on Christmas Island now, Nero with the beautiful little daughters, and I just think it's an absolute disgrace and it's Australia's shame that there are there are people, um, yeah, locked up. It's, yeah, it's terrible. Um, So anyone who's listening, you know, some great places that you can go if you want to learn more and to um, spend money with people um, who did come to Australia as refugees. The Asylum Seeker Resource Centre is a brilliant organisation. Nero's also mentioned Free to Feed, which is um, runs cooking classes and um, also does catering through refugees, as indeed does the ASRC. Um, But, yeah, there is... There's so much to learn and, of, and of course, we need to follow you on Instagram so that we can come and have some kotu roti when you pop up at um, various markets around town. Thank you so much, Nero, for sharing your story with us today. It's, it's our privilege. Thank you. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.